I, the Dragon Overlord. Chapter 151 Coach, I Want to Learn Magic. The ghosts had translucent bodies with monstrous teeth and claws. Like the ghosts in movies, they could easily phase through physical objects and float midair. If the Deep Ones were monsters that reminded people of European or American horror movies, then ghosts would remind people of Asian horror movies. Damn, all these demons, devils, spirits, and monsters have all come out. Mom, I'm afraid of ghosts. Oh, God. Even ghosts exist. I can't turn off the lights at night anymore. You can still fucking sleep. The world is already fucked up, and you can still sleep. Will it not end if I don't sleep? How great is it to be a keyboard warrior? We have been discussing things yet you can't even say anything good. Put up with it, or shut up. If you think you're strong, then go join as part of the volunteer army in Tokyo and fight monsters. How are we supposed to fight with ghosts? Are we supposed to bring peach with swords, charms, or some holy water? Black donkey hooves, maybe children's urine works? Is that the legendary summoning magic? Coach, I want to learn magic. Coach, I also want to learn. The internet was a mess. Compared to monsters like Deep Ones, ghosts brought out more fear from people. Although the Deep Ones were scary, people only looked at them like lions and tigers. They were vulnerable to modern weaponry. As long as they didn't suddenly appear in the millions like war dramas, they were killable after a bit of sacrifice. But ghosts were beyond common sense. In an instant, the world had gone into chaos. With the appearance of ghosts, it did not only mean those ghost legends were true, but it also meant that people could become ghosts after death. Not only the internet, but countries around the world were also discussing worriedly. Humans stood up from apes and became homo sapiens. They had fought and triumphed over countless beasts and creatures recorded in various historical records. However, there were no records of humans fighting against ghosts at all. This was truly something out of their understanding. We have received information from the front lines. As expected, firearms are not that useful against ghosts, perhaps useless even. The energy caused by grenade explosions could damage these ghosts. We can use weapons of mass destruction to deal with them, but this is downtown Tokyo. It is not recommended to use explosives. Warn the first division. Tell all combatants to not fight in areas with a large amount of cover. It's better for them to fight in open fields. These ghosts can travel through solid objects, making them hard to attack. Ghosts do not deal any physical damage. They can pass through the human body and rob people of heat and energy. Perhaps this might be what they call robbing people of their essence? The people who are affected by this might be able to recover, but it requires follow-up observation and treatment after the end of the battle. Note, if the ghosts take away too much essence, it will kill you. Your bodies will be sucked dry and will turn into a mummy. Please abandon the tanks and armored vehicles. The ghosts can penetrate into the tanks and armored vehicles while humans can hardly escape in that narrow space. Various information and commands were being sent to and from headquarters. The experts in the headquarters were also recording things such as the ghosts' fighting methods, reactions, and abilities. This was the first time humans fought these kinds of beings and any bit of information was a treasure. Moreover, fighting with ghosts and humanoid creatures was largely different. When fighting humanoid creatures, having more obstacles was better, but it was better to fight with fewer obstacles against ghosts. This is great. The 12th Brigade found that flamethrowers and liquid nitrogen are extremely lethal against ghosts. Good news finally came into the command room. After a short amount of time experimenting with various weapons, they finally found the ghost's weakness. This was one of the scariest things about modern armies, their ability to collect information in the shortest time possible as well as the ability to make the best response to any situation. The frontline soldiers found that these ghosts were not absolutely invincible. Ordinary firearms seemed to be useless against them, but explosives like bombs could harm them. But explosives could not be used like conventional weapons. People could not just hold a bag of explosives and advance forward, that would be like a suicide attack. Even if that was so, humans were soon able to find that flamethrowers and liquid nitrogen were the ghost's nemesis. What could this mean? Could it be that flamethrowers and liquid nitrogen are equivalent to fire and ice magic? A frequent gamer in the command room could not help but ask. No one could answer him, but everyone thought that this might be possible. Sonic weapons, radiation-based weapons, electromagnetic weapons, ultraviolet rays, and other spectral rays haven't been experimented with. But since we found out that flamethrowers work well, hurry up and send all flamethrowers to the battlefield. The army's efficiency was very good. 
With flamethrowers considered as conventional weapons, the frontline were soon equipped with fireproof clothes and handheld flamethrower. With this, the ghosts were taken down in large groups. But these ghosts were also smart. They would hide underground and ambush the soldiers from below, leading to many tragic scenes. Countless white arms would extend from underground. The terror could make anyone piss their pants. Search hosted novel for the original. Other than the initial casualties, the casualties of the soldiers went down after learning the ghost's weakness, but at the moment, the army was stuck unable to advance any deeper to the core of the city. The deep ones at the center of the city were still praying and sacrificing. As there were still more than a million people alive inside, the army did not date use incendiary bombs, missiles, and other such weapons to attack. They could only watch helplessly as the sacrifices continued and people died. Quickly look, the high priest of the deep ones have moved. With a loud cry, everyone found that the high priest of the deep ones seemed to be annoyed that the ghost could not deal with the enemy. Then, it began to move and joined the battlefield itself. It randomly picked a direction and arrived in front of two brigades. Due to the previous ghost attack, armored cars and tanks had no one inside them anymore. The high priest was faster than any of the deep ones. It only took a few jumps to arrive at the front lines. With each jump, the power behind the drop could dent even the thick steel plates of the armored car. Then, in the eyes of the dumbfounded soldiers, it lifted up an armored car and threw it. A few unlucky soldiers were crushed to death by the armored car and the remaining soldiers were sent flying by its terrifying roar. The bullets that poured on the high priest didn't even hit their marks. Even anti-material rifles were like insect bites against it, and bombs couldn't even stop its pace. The patterns on its body seemed to be alive, making people suspect that it was some kind of magical protection. Is this guy the Hulk? No, even if it is an abomination. Look, it's that old man who appeared at the airport. Just when the high priest was about to commence a massacre, an old man appeared with incredible speed. The old man and the monster's fists met each other. Ha! You devil, go back to the depths of your ocean. The old man shouted angrily. His fists were fierce and mighty. The scene of a two-meter-tall old man fighting a three-meter-tall monster formed a stark contrast to the prior helpless situation. The thickness of their arms was not in proportion, but the old man's thin body successfully blocked the monster's fist. With each clash, a huge shockwave burst out, shattering glasses and even sending some nearby cars and individuals flying. The ground beneath their feet cracked and formed a depression. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. Chapter 152 Suppress Everything Body of Steel It was a sight reminiscent of modern anime and Hollywood movies. At that instant when the two stars of the scene's fists collided, time seemed to freeze. New hairline fissures snaked through the road beneath them. And the cracks from before grew deeper and stretched out a greater distance. Ha! The old man bellowed. His right hand clutched onto the high priest's fist, grasping it tightly, he blasted out with a left punch to the high priest's gut. For a split second, the beast buckled and was lifted into the air slightly, but in the next moment, it shot off in the opposite direction with the speed of a cannonball and crashed into a building. The crowd collectively shuddered at the thought of what such a blow could do to the human body. Once again they rejoiced that he was on their side. This evil demon is not so easy to defeat. You all should quickly evacuate from here. Else I cannot guarantee your safety. The old man lightly gazed at the penetrated building and waved at the soldiers behind him to back away. Find the original at hosted novel. The American and Japanese joint forces looked at each other. Given that they didn't know Chinese, they didn't understand what he was saying. Nonetheless, from his gestures, they could more or less understand his intentions. They hesitated at first. After all, retreating without orders from their superiors could result in them being marked as deserters. As if on cue, the officer of the group received a command and ordered everyone to leave the place. The officers and soldiers were relieved to hear this as the great pressure caused by the fight were already too much for them to bear. The soldiers left the armored vehicles and tanks, but they quickly took a weapon in one hand while helping their injured comrades with another as they left the battlefield. However, they did not retreat too far. In case the old man failed, they would have to take over and fell the beast, no matter the human cost. It's coming. Louis's eyes widened as the high priest arose from the crumbling walls it had crashed into and appeared unharmed. Putting on a slightly stressed expression, he inwardly thought of the many surveillance devices that could be observing him at the moment. As he couldn't tell if a country's satellite or drone was observing him at the moment. He had to deliver a stellar performance. 
I should be able to win a few Oscars with my acting. Louis sighed and then stomped the ground. A powerful force once again dented the ground as he leaped forward at the Deep One. The High Priest of the Deep One was an undead creature that he had scraped together using one of the legendary spells that Noella had learned. The undead creature was mainly enchanted with various abilities. Although it could not compare to a true legendary rank powerhouse, it could definitely pose a challenge to them. It was already at the level of transcendence, which could not be compared to ordinary professions at all. Although ordinary professions were strong, their abilities were far from being able to shock the people of Earth. Even ninth rank powerhouses wouldn't be able to threaten Earth's society very much. So Louis had no choice but to reluctantly create such a potent foe. Only the true power of a transcendent could make the people of Earth feel the true power of transcendence. Bajiquan was considered a short distance punching technique. The actions were simple and uncomplicated, but the force was fast and fierce. Louis did not know martial arts at all, but since he was playing the role, he naturally had to focus on it. Putting force in the heel, waist, and through the fingertips, these were the elements of Bajiquan that Louis had learned. Now, he was using them against the legendary undead creature under his control. The legendary undead creature, whose body had been thoroughly strengthened by Louis, was extremely powerful. Although its fists were clumsy, the power behind them could cause gales to blow. Each collision between the two would cause tremendous vibrations in the air, creating loud booms that could rupture eardrums all over the place. The collision between fists would cause gales to blow up and send debris flying everywhere. In just a short amount of time, they had exchanged countless blows. Their fists were like shadows, and whenever they struck each other directly, the other would fly out, crash into buildings, and leave deep pits. Their fists were even able to penetrate the external armor of a battle tank with one punch. A single touch of their hands on the tank cannon was surprisingly enough to bend it. The high priest let out unpleasant ga 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 screams. It angrily lifted an armored car and leaped up. The old man's face became serious and changed his fists into a palm knife. He then chopped the armored car from top to bottom using only his flesh. It was as if his palm had become the sharpest blade in the world. They were simply living superhumans. Their bodies might be made of steel, and their fists could create big craters on the ground. The aftershocks of their collision not only plowed the ground flat but also sent cars and people flying. And despite all of their efforts, their superhuman durability meant that they could barely harm one another. This kind of strength was beyond human imagination. Perhaps only nuclear weapons could suppress them. But Louis was quite aggrieved, he was now more and more used to fighting like a dragon, biting with the teeth, scratching the claws, and whipping with the tail. Compared to a dragon's body which was basically a weapon, a human's body could not really muster up that much power. But this performance should be enough to satisfy my audience right? The governments should begin to understand the strength of superhumans. Louis was trying to give the illusion that superhumans were outrageously strong, and that they would have more to lose than gain by confronting them. This way, the governments would choose careful methods when contacting them, to let them communicate with dialogue instead of foolish hostility. However, the people of Earth didn't know that Louis was displaying a real high-end battle, even in the world of San Soliel. There weren't many true gods and demigods in the San Soliel. The legendary level of strength being displayed was already beyond mortals. And above the transcendence was the demigod level. Chapter 153 Nuclear Submarine, Ballistic Missile Launch Louis and the High Priest of the Deep Ones continued to trade blows. The two fought for half an hour in the area, causing the tall buildings to be riddled with holes. If not for the strong foundations of modern high-rise buildings, they would have already collapsed. Based purely on destructive power, Louis and the high priest wasn't enough to alarm the people. Blowing up streets of high-rise buildings was simple for modern weapons, let alone tens of thousands of artillery blasts that could level an entire city. But nothing was more shocking than pure flesh being capable of doing this. Louis and the high priest showed everyone their illogical strength. No matter how humans researched biology, they would take an incredibly long amount of time and would only be able to make a stronger modified human. If they wanted to reach the superhuman level, it was something that modern science could not do. It's Baji. It's Bajiquan. I am one who has learned this martial art. I can tell that the old man is using Bajiquan. The whole world was broadcasting the fight in Tokyo. Things had already exploded to this point, and the countries couldn't hide it anymore. Since that was so, they'd rather openly show it to the public and at the same time stifle complaints that the government was hiding information from them. How can you tell that Bajiquan is what he's using? 
no matter how I see it, I can't understand their moves. Their speeds are simply too fast. Go to the website. There is an official shot there with advanced camera equipment. You can even play it back frame by frame to see. I never imagined that I would one day use this kind of method to watch someone fight. This is really Bajiquan. This reminded me of Divine Spear Li Shuwen. Li Shuwen was immortal. He can't even compare. Mom, I have decided, I want to practice martial arts. This novel is available on Hosted Novel. For a moment, a new sensation appeared in the whole world. Everyone was now on fever for Bajiquan. These deep ones were monsters that humans could not imitate. Moreover, the magic used by the high priest of the deep ones was something that normal humans could not learn, but the old man was different. What he was using was Bajiquan, moreover, from his posture and stances, there wasn't that much difference from modern Bajiquan. So everyone assumed that learning it would have more of an effect. If Louis knew that humans were thinking like this, he would definitely snicker. Whoever learned his Bajiquan would definitely twist their waist. His power was not from martial arts at all. The problem here was that Earth lacked that special energy fluctuation that Sansolial had. Even if these people practiced till the end of the world, they wouldn't be able to accomplish anything. Even if Louis released the secrets of spells to the entire Earth, no one would be able to do it even if they practiced to their deaths. This could not be helped at all. Earth was only a playground for science and technology. It simply could not play with magic. It's almost time for the next performance. I will have a magic battle with the undead creature and then I can call it a day. Now, my plan is almost complete. I can soon check if faith can cross through universes and dimensions. Meanwhile, under the surface of the Pacific Ocean, a United States nuclear submarine was quietly moving forward. Suddenly an alarm sounded and all the soldiers quickly took their positions. In the captain's room, several men were discussing something. Do you think we can hit them with a the Trident II ballistic missile? Several experts in the military were discussing with each other as they watched the battle on screen. This man and that monster can move very fast. If they are aware of our movements, they could escape and the difficulty of hitting them would be very high. But if they are within a certain range, they wouldn't be able to dodge our missile especially when it can reach Mach 24, which is 20 times the speed of sound. After a pause, the expert continued, of course, it is impossible for them to be hit by the core of the explosion but they would definitely be within the explosion radius. Are we really going to do this? Won't randomly attacking these superhumans bring us trouble? The captain mentioned it with a bit of worry. According to the news from the frontline headquarters in Japan, a suspicious priest appeared there. He could not fight for some reason, but is a friend of the old man. According to intelligence, these supernatural forces might have hostility to other cultures. Those of Eastern cultures probably belong to one faction. In this period of time, we haven't found any supernatural forces related to Western culture. Since there are evil things like Cthulhu and dragons, we are also monitoring the Vatican, but nothing unusual has happened yet. We must first consider whether the form of international politics will change because of their appearance. For example, Japan has cultural similarities to China, so they might choose to go against the United States and choose to unite with China. If so, then the whole Pacific Ocean will be under the control of China and Japan. They might even be able to take the whole of Asia which would be unfavorable if a war breaks out. This time, we have a good reason for doing this. Eliminating the Deep Ones will be for the sake of humanity. That old man was just unlucky to be affected by the blast. The president has already agreed to this plan. We can also test out the true power of these superhumans to see if they could really handle modern weapons. The captain was silent for a moment and nodded, I understand. Do we need to use nuclear warheads? That place is Tokyo, Japan, do not use nuclear warheads. The blame for causing World War III would be on our heads. The captain nodded and quickly stood in front of the command console, we have received higher orders, command code XXXXX. Trident 2 ballistic missile targeting the coordinates east longitude triple X north latitude triple X. Prepare for launch. Missile is loaded. Countdown to launch. 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Along with the opening of a hatch, a 10-meter-long missile and as wide as 2 meters was pushed out. It seemed to float for a moment but ejected strong flames in the next instant. It broke the water surface and flew to the skies, speeding towards Tokyo. It used three-section propulsion so it was in the upper strata of the atmosphere for most of its flight. By the time it was close to the destination, it would descend vertically and fly at Mach 24. The missile was almost impossible to intercept. 
Louis, who was fighting the high priest of the Deep One, immediately sensed danger. Even my intuition is kicking in? That can't be good. Chapter 154 Blasting a Missile with One Punch With his understanding of Earth's technology, Louis had never underestimated the power of its advanced weapons. Of all the species on the planet, only humans possessed enough potential to destroy themselves numerous times over. Though magic was bizarre and unpredictable, it ultimately paled in comparison to the destructive abilities of modern armaments. While spells like, fireball, could be effective and powerful within the context of medieval society, they didn't count for much in the modern world. Rather, their damage potential only reached the level of handheld grenades. Furthermore, magic required various rituals. It wasn't as convenient as holding an AK-47 and pulling the trigger. However, there were many spells that had unbelievable effects. For example, the Ninth Ring spell, Time Stop, had an effect just like its name. It causes people to perceive the relativity of time differently to simulate a time-stopping effect. If it wasn't because Louis didn't know how to use it, he would have already scared the people of Earth to death. And if the gods used divine power to create a real time-stopping effect, even the Terran civilization wouldn't have a means of defending against it. The paradoxes of science had no meaning for magic. Spells or divine magic were concepts that achieve a purpose while directly omitting most of the process. In other words, it was impossible to explain with science. There were no processes to spells at all. The ability to stop time was more like a philosophical ability. After the American nuclear submarines launched the Trident II ballistic missile, all the officers and men of the submarine held their breaths. They stared at the footage on screen, watching the mysterious old man and the high priest of the Deep One still engaged in a fight to the death. These ordinary officers and men had excited yet fearful expressions. They didn't know if it was right or wrong for them to launch the missile. Although the missile didn't have a nuclear warhead, it was still an immensely powerful weapon. Its payload was six times more powerful than conventional explosives. If the missile could kill both of them, that would be the best-case scenario. This would at least prove that the superhumans weren't invincible and could be killed with modern weapons. These superhumans could cause great damage to a country due to their body size and ability to hide in crowds, but if modern weapons could kill them, the government would be able to negotiate with them. The government would use modern weapons as bargaining chips so that the other party couldn't act with free reign. This was equivalent to a nuclear weapon treaty. But if these weapons didn't work on these superhumans, the governments would have to be worried about their reactions. Would they be annoyed at the United States of America for launching missiles? Would they step on their land and cause chaos? If that happened, then Hollywood would be the first to go out of business. The reason was that no one would go to the movies anymore and they would just need to watch these superhumans perform in reality. Some people began to complain about why the government had to implement such a plan with unknown prospects. It would be good if the plan succeeded, but the consequences of failure were too big. The President of the United States and many senior officials were also watching the missile from the White House. They secretly prayed to God that the missile would be effective, but another thought also popped up in their heads, would the all-knowing, all-powerful Lord bless the supernatural? Or would he bless mere mortals? In fact, the United States had no choice and could only resort to this measure. Find the original at hosted novel. This was the concept of the poor had nothing to lose. The political systems of other countries were shackled by the United States of America. All countries were only the second oldest, so whoever was the boss, their status would remain the same. But for the United States, things would be different. They were used to being the boss. They could flaunt their carrier fleets in the entire Pacific Ocean. These carrier fleets were the defender of the dollar and oil. This was one of the reasons why the United States could use the dollar to order other countries. If the world superpower changed, the United States of America, which was geolimited to North America, would lose everything. Their dollar system would collapse. This was a result that they would not want to see. With the knowledge that the superhumans were rooted in cultural conflicts, the United States of America was even more frustrated. Compared to Asia and Europe, the United States of America was a cultural desert. What? Those white-skinned pigs actually launched a missile. It's an invasion. An invasion of our Japan. The senior officials of Japan's Ministry of Defense and other departments were discussing the current situation and response methods at the prime minister's residence. After getting news that the JSDF's radar detected an incoming missile, the senior officials were in a state of panic. All kinds of verbal curses and shouting echoed from the room. We can't let those Americans do what they want and let them just drop bombs on our land. 
we should fight back and resist against them, but in the end, their clamor was fruitless. They could not really do anything. They had been used to being under America and most of the hot-blooded people of the Heisei and Shoah eras were already gone. They wouldn't use nuclear weapons, right? A cabinet official said in horror. No, they wouldn't dare. If they dare use nuclear weapons in Tokyo, World War III could happen. If that happened, everyone would be left with sticks to fight World War IV. Can we intercept the missile? Impossible. The best missile interception system belongs to the United States, and its interception rate isn't that high. Moreover, the missile is already reaching the end of its acceleration. The crowd went silent again. They didn't want a missile to land even if it wasn't a nuclear missile. The damage caused to Tokyo wouldn't be that big, but it would be a huge slap on Japan's face, even if it was Father America. Moreover, what the Americans could think of, the Japanese could also think of. If the missile could truly deal with the high priest of the deep ones and the old man, that would be for the best. This would mean that human society won against superhuman society. But if it couldn't deal with them, what would happen when the mysterious old man gets angry? The Japanese cabinet felt that the Americans were ruthless. They used Japan as an outpost to test the strength of these superhumans and even dragged Japan into it. Let's see the results first. The Japanese prime minister said with a headache. He felt that he was the only prime minister in all of history to have these things happen in his term of office. Here it comes. Louis blasted the high priest of the deep ones into a building with a single slap. His eyes shrewdly flashed, sensing the rapidly approaching danger. Damn, what speed! Even the nerves of a dragon couldn't keep up. Facing the missile, Louis, who had not yet fully evolved, was also in awe. No other way. I must borrow the power of the godhood. Louis made his decision quickly. He began to mobilize the divine power and used his divine authority. In that instant, his entire person seemed to have sublimated and transformed from mortal into god. Although it was only at the demigod level, it was power close to the gods. Faced with the power of the missile, Louis was barely able to keep up with that speed. Now, his nostrils widened as he exhaled. With a loud shout, he stomped on the ground, leaped up into the air, and threw a punch at the warhead traveling at Mach 24. That image was so spectacular, like a human facing a comet. Chapter 155 I am a miracle. I am a legend. Under the gaze of countless spectators, the skies of Tokyo bore witness to one of the greatest miracles ever witnessed by mankind. How fast and how powerful was the missile you might wonder. Even if the warhead did not have explosive energy, just the speed alone was enough to tear apart a fully grown adult dragon into pieces. This was a power that mortal flesh could never withstand. To intercept such a ballistic missile, one would need legendary rank spells to protect oneself. Moreover, the preparations for the spell would have to be done in advance and could not be cast immediately. And even if one withstood the first shot, human technological weapons could continuously launch dozens to hundreds of it. Even legendary rank mages would become charred under such power. But just because mortals could not resist it did not mean that the gods couldn't. Even if the speed was a hundred times more, true gods would be able to easily block it. In the face of gods, speed was meaningless, a mere concept that could be changed once under their domain. Although there was a gap between demigod and true gods, they were both divine entities nonetheless. Louis was currently in a human form. He used the power inside the godhood to use his divine authority and temporarily become a demigod that could contend with the gods. Divine Power Emerald Domain Louis wasn't playing as a god at the moment, so he could not use his divine authority to affect the real world, but he could shrink the domain to only affect himself. The domain of dreams could turn real into illusory and illusory into real. With his mastery over the dream, he obtained the power to manipulate reality. All dreams come true, fantasy manifestation. This is the incredibility of God. A thunderous roar exploded throughout Tokyo, making the sky rumble. Humans could not see the missile that was traveling at Mach 24, but when Louis's fist made contact with the warhead, time seemed to have stopped. The world lost its luster, becoming completely monochrome, and everyone bore witness to the collision. In the next moment, boom! The missile that carried the hopes of modern human civilization exploded. The thermobaric weapon was the limit of class at conventional weapons. Even if it only carried a limited amount of high-energy fuel, its power was still enough to raise everything to the ground. It was close to tactical nuclear missiles. After the first explosion, the fuel inside the missile would then ignite and explode. This was where the name came from. 
The second explosion would cause the fuel to instantly combust. All oxygen in range would be consumed causing a massive pressure wave. The huge vacuum created would be enough to tear the organs of any living creature and level buildings. If there were any normal human beings in the range of the explosion, their bodies would have turned to ashes and printed on the wall in an instant. This novel is available on Hosted Novel. Bunkers were useless in front of this human invention. Whether above ground or below ground, as long as it was within range, no creature would be able to survive. The outer walls of the buildings melted into lava under the high temperature and pressure. The fierce flames continued burning for a long time. This was the terror of a thermobaric explosion. Its effects were far beyond ordinary explosives. No grass could grow anywhere it blew up. What is that? Nuclear explosion? Anyone who first witnesses this would always think of it as a nuclear explosion. Damn, that's a thermobaric missile. Which country launched it? This is too vicious. Using such a missile against one person, this might be the first person in the world to experience it. Who else but the United States could do this? This thing could instantly disintegrate living things and leave no trace of them behind. It's truly terrifying. The United States of America has gone crazy. What about the old man that's been helping us fight those monsters? The leader of those monsters is also within range. America must have wanted to get rid of them both. Ha! This is the so-called politics. America is afraid, afraid of these superhumans, and afraid that their hegemony might be overthrown. How is the old man? No need to look. He is absolutely dead. Even if that thing is not a nuclear missile, it is still considered as one of the strongest conventional weapons. Humans are a form of carbon-based life, right? I don't think he could survive that. Everyone watching the battle went silent. Although they inwardly did not believe that a superhuman could die like this, they could not help but come to that conclusion. In their perception, such a terrifying thing could not be blocked by any creature on earth. Films and movies were only created by people's imagination as there was no comparison. Quick! Point all the satellites and unmanned drones there, I want to see the results. Are they dead? No response for now. They should be dead. The entire place is still on fire. With temperatures over a thousand degrees, no one could approach it and life detectors are useless. Then we can only wait. My God bless us. The governments of the world had mixed feelings while looking at the burning neighborhood. Fortunately, the destruction was not extensive. With the current level of human technology, it would be repaired in two to three months. But was the old man and the monster really dead? People were glad and sad at the same time. Suddenly, the fire seemed to shrink violently in part, revealing the devastated surroundings. People sucked in a breath of cold air only to see that the ground and the surroundings barely existed. Building exteriors had been turned into liquid metal and lava still flowed everywhere. But compared to the disgusting scene of this hell, the old man's figure made everyone more fearful. He had his hands behind his back, and there were no injuries on his body at all. Even the clothes on his body weren't destroyed. He was even walking forward in an environment that reached a heat of thousands of degrees. Oh my god. He's the real monster. The world is changing. Impossible. This is definitely impossible. He is Ultraman. Or maybe Megatron? This is perhaps the most miraculous thing in the history of mankind. Chapter 156 Using the Missile as an Endorsement The world was shocked. When seeing the mysterious old man come out of the flames unharmed and as pristine as before, the spectators went numb with shock. This was a thermobaric missile. Whether it was a small thermobaric missile or a big thermobaric missile, it was still a thermobaric missile. How powerful was this thing you might ask? It's so powerful that everything in its immediate radius would be instantly annihilated by its heat and pressure. Nothing should have been able to survive it. But the old man was unfazed at all, and even his clothes weren't torn. What was more terrifying was that the old man was not at the edge of the explosion radius. He had even punched the missile head on. With his own body, he had withstood the full power of the explosion and the high temperature. I can now understand why characters in Dragon Ball don't lose their underwear during fights. It wasn't that the author of Dragon Ball was stupid, but only the strong could protect their underwear properly. One punch against a thermobaric explosion? I want to be invincible as well. In the human arsenal of mass destruction weapons, other than nuclear missiles would be chemical and biological weapons, but I think that chemical and biological weapons may even be less effective on these superhumans. By training in Bajiquan, he could reach a point where his flesh could contend against a thermobaric explosion? Even martial arts novels don't dare write such things. 
This is simply dark fantasy, right? Mom, is Earth really Earth? People all over the world were discussing the incredible scene. Moreover, countless foreigners were excitedly clamoring to go to China and learn martial arts. Although they understood that the so-called martial artists in China could never compare in power to the old man, humans had a tendency to view things positively. In the captain's room of the nuclear submarine, numerous American officers and sailors gulped their saliva. They incredulously looked at the result. I is he injured or not? God, how would I know? Unless the old man wants us to check his body, how would I know if he is injured or not? The thermobaric missile was useless. Would he come to our country's soil to kill all soldiers? I hope not. Those soldiers who are at the scene are probably feeling very miserable right now. Still, we have to keep firing. That place is Tokyo. Is it not enough to fire one missile? Are you planning to fire another one? What else could we use against the old man? Are you planning on using nuclear missiles? Don't you think that if we dared fire again, the Japanese would fight for their lives against us? I just received a message from the president. The president and the secretary of defense want us to wait and see what happens. Do not take any more actions. Yeah, that's the only thing we can do. Let's see this old man's reaction first. If more of these superhumans come out, I wonder how we are going to fight it out. No one else could say anything, because they didn't know what to do. The American soldiers on the scene cursed and trembled with guns in their hands. They wanted the person who was responsible for this mess to take responsibility immediately. If the old man really decided to invade their homeland, they would definitely pit their lives against him. Even if he was more powerful. But, the soldiers were called to help Japan to deal with the monsters in Tokyo. The mysterious old man who appeared was also fighting the leader of the monsters, so they should have been natural allies. The old man was a solid barrier that would have protected the soldiers from excessive casualties. And what did the United States government do? They backstabbed him. It would have been all good if they were successful, but it had failed miserably. Now, nothing could be done. If the old man was angry and began to retaliate, then even if the United States wanted to start World War III in nuke Tokyo, these soldiers wouldn't be able to survive. They were simply betrayed if that were to happen. Even the officers who joined in were also cursing in a panic. The morale of the American soldiers had dropped to the lowest. Just like American forces, the Japanese self-defense force also received instructions from above, telling them to distance themselves from the American forces to prevent bad luck from affecting them. Seeing that the allies who were fighting side by side begin packing up their weapons and equipment, the American soldiers were at a loss on what to do. Louis noticed the change in the American army and did not care at all. He was a bit angry, but it was impossible for him to fly into a rage. The bold actions of the United States of America were a bit unexpected, but he had already set up ample preparations to deal with it. Moreover, thanks to their actions, the effects he was trying to get with his actions were a pleasant surprise. I'm not yet a true god, so I was still a bit reluctant to face a thermobaric missile. Louis's hands that he hid with his sleeves were trembling. There was still a small difference between the power of a demigod compared to Earth's human inventions. Even with the power of the divine authority to turn dreams into reality, Louis still had a hard time dealing with the explosion, but this increased the effects of his performance. If the United States of America really went crazy and used nuclear weapons, people would be able to quickly find out that the superhuman mysterious old man and the high priest of the deep ones would also turn into ashes. This was also the reason why Louis chose to mess with Tokyo. Tokyo was one of the most populous cities in the world. They would not dare fire a missile that could cause a world war that could threaten the existence of the human race. At the same time, they would carry huge moral and public pressure. If Louis had been foolish enough to cause trouble in the desert of the sea, nuclear missiles would definitely come flying his way, and he could not face them at the moment. Once I become a true god and gain true power, I can directly destroy a nuclear missile and scare everyone to death. Although he would need powerful divine power to be able to achieve this and he was still far from his destination, the latter had already been prepared and he just had to take things slowly. Those true gods all had many incomprehensible abilities and all of them were conceptual. For example, if a true god told you to die, then you would die. This was something unexplainable by science, nor were there any signs that you would face a calamity. You would simply die, plain and simple. There wasn't any cause and effect relationship. You would just die as if God had imposed the concept of death upon you. Louis felt that the Terran civilization was certainly powerful, but this civilization was also a materialistic civilization. There was no way for them to prevent this conceptual attack. 
Louis doesn't know how to defend against this at all. Even hiding inside black holes or neutron stars would not save you. There was no way to describe this. Only the gods can fight other gods. Louis was grateful that the gods temporarily didn't exist in San Soliel for the moment. If that happened, he would have to behave obediently as they would be able to kill him. Even if he was a demigod, he would have no choice. Support us at Hosted Novel. Very good. Since the United States of America helped me put on a big show, then the next effect of my plan would be better. If this plan was carried out right off the bat, people might not believe it, but thanks to the missile, people would become more convinced at the existence of gods. Now, Louis gave a thumbs up at the United States. They had already played their part. Now, he hopes that the big countries of the world would obediently stay put. Chapter 157 Take Your Soul and Roast It for a Thousand Years Sigh. It seems like we can't determine the victor properly between us anymore. The fierce flames gradually diminished. Even if the flames were caused by a thermobaric bomb, if there were no more combustible material, it would also gradually become an ordinary fire. Louis, who was playing the part of the old man, sighed. His face revealed a pained look. We are hosted novel, find us on Google. Fate is mischievous. This old man was commissioned by a friend to come and cut the monster, but the monster wasn't cut. Instead, our battle was interrupted by this strange firebomb. Louis slightly exhaled. With a bell-like loud voice that contained ageless wisdom he said, although mortals have a weak body, I did not expect that they would have found other methods by developing those strange skills to this point. The bomb is very powerful. Even if this old man struck the bomb, I could feel my blood and chi flip out and even my internal organs felt uncomfortable. His words were meant for those who were watching. The various governments of the world could hear what he said. And those governments who were watching sucking in a breath of cold air. The old man punched the bomb head on yet surprisingly his blood and chi only flipped out and felt some discomfort. Isn't this too much? As Louis's voice fell, the high priest of the deep ones walked out from the building ruins step by step. It did not appear to have any injuries as if the explosion was nothing special. Seeing this scene, the governments of the world revealed an understanding expression. After all, the high priest of the deep ones was able to fight with the old man for so long, it was obviously not weak. In fact, the moment Louis noticed the missile, the first thing he did was to strike away his own summoned legendary undead creature. That way, he could destroy the missile in midair as well as prevent the undead creature from getting too close to the explosion. Compared to Louis, who could use divine power, the summoned undead creature was only barely at legendary rank. It was not as good as real legendary rank undead. If it was at the core of the explosion, even if it did not die, it would suffer a lot of damage. At that time, those who were watching would experience a boost in morale. This would tell them that human weapons could harm these superhumans. If the damage was sufficient, they might even follow up with more missiles. As a result, most of the explosive power was taken in by Louis while the undead creature was only at the edge of the explosion. That amount of explosive power was nothing to it, but for the people who were watching, they could only see that the thermobaric explosion was useless against the old man or the high priest of the deep one. Gua. The high priest of the deep one let out an unpleasant sound. As if it was speaking, it roared at Louis and warily retreated. It was as if it knew that no one would win between it and Louis and those mortals might try to fish for profits again, so it was not ready to fight. Louis let the high priest of the deep ones leave. He stood in place as if he was hesitant. After thinking about it, he also turned back and moved away. His speed seemed to be slow yet fast. With just one small step he was able to move ten meters, just like Buddha Zidi Vida. No one dared stop him nor say anything to him on his way. Looking at the direction the old man was going, the US-Japan Joint Operations Headquarters people were shocked because he was headed their way. After discovering this, the people inside unconsciously looked at the Shinto priest who was like an illusory shadow. The Shinto priest had his eyelids lowered and his hands folded in front of him. His thin body that looked like a withered tree branch made people feel a subconscious terror as if they were looking at a monster. The Shinto priest just stood there without saying anything and no one dared to talk to him. Now that the old man was also heading there, they thought that it might be related to the Shinto priest. It didn't take long for Louis to arrive at the headquarters, which was located in a hidden underground building. Thanks to the power of his, illusion, spell, Louis was able to easily find his way there. This was the spell that created the fake Shinto priest. The guards of the self-defense force trembled at Louis's arrival. Their legs were shivering as they wanted to run away, but they also felt that this was in line with their responsibilities as soldiers. 
They trembled as they said, S. Sorry. This place is a restricted area. We cannot let you pass without orders. They didn't care if Louis understood Japanese or not. They just said what their duties dictated of them. Louis ignored them and only shot them a glance. His draconic might paralyze the guards with fear. If they held a firm will, perhaps they might be able to resist, but the battle before had already greatly destabilized their mental states. His pressure simply pushed them over the edge. After passing these guards, Louis walked into the secret base and went straight to the command center. The people inside the command room were on standby, especially those that belonged to the United States. They were so frightened and nervous that they wanted to cry. The United States just used a bomb to blow the old man up. Who knew if he came here for revenge? Louis walked into the command room as if no one was there. He simply ignored everyone else and looked at the Shinto priest who was standing in the corner with an apologetic smile, my bad, old friend Fujiwara. I originally accepted your commission to exterminate those servants of the evil god, but I did not expect things to end like this. The high priest of the evil god is almost on par with me. I wouldn't be able to do anything in the short term. The Shinto priest, who had been wearing a stone-cold face, seemed to become much gentler after seeing the old man. He slowed down his tone and said, this had nothing to do with you, old friend. I originally thought that it was just some mortals who succumbed to the evil god's temptation and became its servants. I never expected that they had long planned this out and even brought out a high priest. It's just regretful that I can't return yet and fight together with you. The Shinto priest spoke with a bit of self-condemnation. Then he looked coldly at the people in the room and said, and there are fools who are unable to accomplish anything but liable to spoil everything. If not for my inability to influence the world now, I would have long extracted their souls and put it on a blazing fire to roast for a thousand years so that they would beg to die. The Shinto priest's measured words chilled everyone's hearts. They found that compared to the gentle old man from China, the Shinto priest was more like a demon. They wondered how the two became close friends. Now, all lives face a crisis. I originally thought that coming back would be a joyous event but I never imagined that it would be the time when the evil demons would cause trouble. The old man sighed quietly, as if he was worried about the calamities and difficulties that the world would have to face. Chapter 158 How Can I Continue Pretending If You Don't Beg Me? The Japanese Prime Minister and Cabinet Ministers as well as the ambassadors of various countries were rushing to the US-Japan Joint Operations Headquarters. In addition to some political figures, some representatives of the Japanese Zaibatsu, wealthy clique, also came. As the previous era ended, these people were the ones who took hold of Japan's true power. Meeting any one of them was beyond difficult and required one to lower oneself and take the initiative to go to their official residence. But now, these bigwigs were being respectful. Without caring for any loss of face, they made their way to the HQ with the greatest speed. Masters, can you please explain to us mortals the origin of these monsters and what they want to do? The Prime Minister, whose surname was the same as one of Japan's most famous on Myoji, lowered his head and asked respectfully. He used the most respectful language which was extremely rare in modern Japanese society. The representatives of other countries also perked up their ears to probe the two. The Japanese Prime Minister looked at the old man with a withered appearance, but inwardly he was happy to meet this man who had the famous surname of Fujiwara. The surname Fujiwara could be said to be the real nobility of Japan. From the Asuka period, this family name had always been associated with nobility. However, there were countless people with the surname Fujiwara throughout history, so it was impossible to guess the true identity of the old man, nor was it known if the old man even left a trace in history. We are hosted novel, find us on Google. The Chinese man said that he was a person from the Ming dynasty which is more than 500 years ago. This priest should also be close in age to him. Thinking about this, the Prime Minister let out a complex expression. Longevity was said to be the dream of morals. The poor desired wealth and power, while those who had wealth and power pursued a long life. Even the Chinese Emperor Qin Shi Huang wasn't exempt from this. As for the Chinese man practicing Bajiquan to live forever, no one would believe it. Everyone knew that it was just a sort of martial arts to fight against the enemy. They expected that the old man must have some kind of special technique to accomplish this. Even if this longevity was different from true immortality, living for a hundred thousand years more was enough to make them envious. The ambassador of America found himself unable to intervene at all. As the world's superpower, it was rare for them to be unable to put in a word in this kind of international event. But he really couldn't help it, especially when his country had provoked the superhumans. 
He was already thankful to God that they did not retaliate against America, so he stood at the side. The Japanese prime minister was also pleased with himself at this time. Japan had always been behind America, but this could not be helped. Japan simply couldn't afford to mess with them. Naturally, as a sovereign country, he did not like it when other countries would tell them what to do with their policies and military. The prime minister felt very close to these two superhumans. The main reason was that the Shinto priest was Japanese, which caused the Japanese people to feel that they were on the same side. This was also the purpose why Louis created the Shinto priest. It was to make them feel good and have an easier time communicating, allowing many things to be said in the open. Lord Priest said that he can't return yet, but it is only a matter of time for him to return. With the good relationship between the Lord Priest and the Chinese man, his strength shouldn't be any weaker. The representatives of Japan were all making calculations in their hearts. If there were countries previously hostile to the appearances of these superhumans, then with Louis's performance of punching the thermobaric missile, their attitudes immediately changed. They all came to a consensus that they could not force these superhumans to do anything. As long as these superhumans didn't cause trouble, overthrow the government, or cause mass destruction and massacres, then the governments would treat them well. There were a lot of things lacking with the current civilization, the only thing that wasn't lacking was enjoyment and entertainment. They could absolutely serve them better than any ancient emperor could. And in case they could get some benefits from these superhumans, they might be able to live for more than 50 more years. They would even be willing to fight for it if it was given to others. The Shinto priest did not speak. He maintained his high and cold persona, while the Chinese man was very amiable. Seeing the group, he explained, these monsters you call the Deep Ones are servants of the evil god. The evil god is an extraterrestrial demon. His will descends upon worlds replete with life and drives all who contact it crazy. As for their actions, you can see what it is. They want to summon the will of the evil god by means of blood sacrifice. It will bring great disaster to this world and drive the world into madness and decay. Previously, this old man has checked it. In the sea you now call the Pacific Ocean, there are trails of the evil god which must be caused by the deep ones under the ocean. They probably used the sacrifices they obtained that time to start a more massive plan this time. Louis narrated the details he had made up before to convince these people. He also made an explanation for the cargo ship in the Pacific and in case there was any information that did not match with theirs, these people had no choice but to believe it because they could not prove his lies. Louis's explanation was the same as the government's speculation. Everyone wasn't surprised. The prime minister looked around before continuing to ask questions as everyone's representative, can this ritual be stopped? This is not difficult. The evil god that you call Cthulhu is related to the stars. We just need to wait for the sun to rise which would weaken the power of the ritual and stop it. Before the Japanese people could rejoice, Louis gave them another blow to the head, but this time, the deep ones are well prepared for the sacrifice. Probably by about 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning, the ritual will be completed. Aren't you just wasting our time? Doesn't that mean that the sun will not rise tomorrow? The Japanese side cursed inwardly but they did not dare show it. Then what would be the consequences of the ritual? The prime minister nervously asked. This time Louis did not answer. The Shinto priest glanced at the prime minister and spoke with a cold voice, most probably Edo, or what you now call Tokyo would be invaded by the will of the evil god. Everyone in the city would go crazy or die because of it. Hearing the Shinto priest's words, everyone sucked in a breath of cold air. They did not actually believe it, but no one would dare bet on what the result might be. If they lost the bet, the whole of Japan would be finished. Just at that moment, a voice with a Russian accent came from the side, if you Japanese don't know how to solve this crisis, we Russians are willing to give you a free Tsar Bomba to strike directly at Tokyo. All your problems would be solved. What a bunch of barbarians. The Japanese side cursed inwardly. These Russians only know about using nuclear bombs. During the Fukushima power plant leakage incident, the only solution they came up with was to use a nuclear bomb on the nuclear power plant and explained that this was using poison to fight poison. Naturally, the Japanese would not choose this option. What was the difference between this and the destruction caused by the evil god? Moreover, it might even be worse than what the evil god could do. What the evil god wanted was human life, but with a nuclear weapon, all the buildings in Tokyo would probably be turned to ashes. Moreover, the nuclear radiation left behind would turn the land uninhabitable for hundreds of years. Is there really no other way? The prime minister asked with a bit of despair in his voice. 
I was waiting for you to say that. How can I continue pretending if you don't beg me? Louis muttered inwardly. TLN, in case you don't know, the most famous on Myoji is Aid no Saimai, so it's referencing former Japanese PM Aid Shinzo. Chapter 159 Sacrifice to the Spirits and Gods Louis appeared hesitant, as though he was worried about the implications of answering. This calculated response hinted to onlookers that while he indeed had the ability to deal with the situation, he was just unsure if it was appropriate to do so. Seeing this, the Japanese representatives were naturally overjoyed. The prime minister did not care about being reserved anymore and directly and respectfully asked, is there a solution that can deal with our country's crisis? If there is, the Japanese government is willing to cooperate with anything. This was human nature. When seeing strong people, they would grovel at their feet, and before the weak, they would happily flex their muscles and oppress them. It was hard to say whether this human characteristic was good or bad. Towards the action of their prime minister, the others did not care as they had no other choices. In nicer words, this was to undergo self-imposed hardships so as to strengthen one's resolve to wipe out a national humiliation. Before old man Louis could speak, the Shinto priest he was controlling anxiously said, Old friend, are you planning to perform the ritual of sacrifice to the spirits and gods? You shouldn't do this. Even if the summoned being descends, your vitality would be greatly injured. We are hosted novel, find us on Google. That's why I'm considering things. Louis was showing an anxious expression as if he would have to do something more worrisome than punching a thermobaric missile. He paced two steps in place with his hands behind his back and his head down. He seemed to be calculating something while the Japanese people were looking at him with bated breath. Towards the conversation between the two, they had to pretend to understand even if they didn't. In any case, they understood that the Chinese man was planning something big, but this would create huge losses and damages to him. After a long while, Louis stopped. If one of two interdependent things falls, the other is in danger. It is our obligation to destroy these demons and prevent the evil god from descending. If we let the world be scoured by the evil god, our great plan to return would be affected. The Shinto priest was speechless, looked at his old friend, and said indignantly, I can only blame myself for not being able to return yet. This land has been my place of refuge since ancient times. I should have set up an altar and summoned Amaterasu Amikami to bless us with her divine power. I would have been the one to bear the price for the god's descent and not you. I never thought that you, my old friend, would have to do it. The withered priest revealed an expression of shame and guilt. He waved his long sleeves and said, No, how could I let my old friend pay the price? These mortals are useless to us and we just wouldn't be able to return to our homeland. Let them go to their destruction. Hearing the Shinto priest's cruel words, the mortals present felt aghast in their hearts. Just as they had expected, the superhumans do not care about the life and death of mortals. As for why the Chinese man was so compassionate, anyone with a bit of understanding towards Chinese culture would know. During the Ming dynasty, Confucianism flourished. Even if the old man did not believe it, he was definitely influenced by it. Confucianism was a culture with the idea of peace under the heavens and open-mindedness and righteousness exist in the world. After the Shinto priest finished speaking, he saw that the old man seemed to have made up his mind and helplessly sighed, since it is your decision, I will not refute it, but I can't just let you pay the price. Although the mortals cannot compensate you, you have your clan behind you. Seeing that this world is now materially developed, even if you do not mind, you should think about the people behind you. He once again looked at the Japanese people and said in a deep voice, I will give you three days to collect Aoi of this land. Collect as much as you can and use these to compensate my old friend. The Shinto priest gave irrefutable orders to the Japanese representatives. If the Chinese man was the one who said this, the Japanese might still agree to it, but they would be reluctant. But if the Shinto priest, who represented their gods, said this, they would not have the slightest thought of refusal and would take things for granted. In the hearts of the Japanese, the Shinto priest was their ancestor who was a master of supernatural powers. Moreover, he even said that he could ask Amaterasu Amikami to descend. Any one of them knew that Amaterasu Amikami was said to be the real ancestor of their first emperor. Aoi! The Japanese were stunned. They did not know which Aoi the Shinto priest was referring to. On the contrary, the representatives of the Chinese side thought carefully and said, Is it the Aoi talked about in the poem Odes of Ben's seventh month? the Aoi enjoying the winds of the seventh month? The Shinto priest looked at him and nodded his head, indicating that this was the Aoi he was talking about. The people on the Japanese side looked at the Chinese representative with a questioning gaze. 
Lord Priest is probably talking about wasabi, the man explained. Wasabi? Hearing this, everyone present was frozen. Wasabi was indeed called the king of herbs and spices because it was difficult to grow. The price per pound was also extremely high, making it hard for the average person to eat. Although there was the kind mixed with mustard, it was ultimately only a sham. For the people present, they did not mind how expensive it was, but they were more curious about why the Shinto priest wanted wasabi. They wondered if there was some kind of mysterious element in wasabi that was valued by these superhumans. Perhaps, it could even be compared to those legendary treasures. For a moment, many people had made a decision to inform their countries to study wasabi and see what mysteries it was hiding. Moreover, the conversation between the two people revealed more information, such as the existence of a group of people behind the two that still required food and water. It was possible that these masters who possess supernatural powers were successor-like existences of some sect or clan. The Japanese side also had the same idea, but they quickly agreed to the Shinto priest's request. Although Japan's land was small, they pursued quality over quantity. They were absolutely confident in the quality of the vegetables and fruits they grew. Moreover, there was a huge demand for wasabi, so there were many plantations. Didn't you just want wasabi? We can just give you all the year's harvest. If this wasabi really has mystical powers then we can just plant it next year. This is not a non-renewable resource. After obtaining the Japanese government's guarantee, Louis relaxed as he accomplished his task. If he had controlled someone rich, there was a limit to obtaining it. Now, the Japanese government was backing him, so there was no issue. There were also representatives of Japanese zaibatsus in the room, so he should soon have enough raw materials. When he returned to Dragon City, he could turn his spoils into magic potions and create an army of mages. His city would be able to develop and allow him to establish a dragon god church. Although this old man is at chi refining, I am also an alchemist and quite proficient at the ritual of sacrificing to the spirits and gods. That said, I still need some materials that your side needs to prepare. Saying so, Louis dictated a bunch of materials. The Japanese representatives wrote down all these things while revealing expressions of confusion. It wasn't that the materials were precious, but they were very odd. The Chinese man wanted freshly hunted animals, freshly harvested crops, pure handmade wine, and other materials. Although these things were odd, they were very easy to find. The Japanese representatives agreed immediately. Help this old man find a clean river. Before the ritual begins, this old man needs to bathe and change clothes as a sign of respect to the gods. As Louis's words fell, the Japanese representatives immediately searched for a proper location. Before leaving the headquarters, Louis suddenly smiled and looked at the American representative who hadn't spoken a word, someone asked, to requite resentment with kindness, what do you think of that? The master said, with what then will you respond with to kindness? Requite resentment with justice, requite kindness with kindness. But this old man believes more strongly in requiting resentment with resentment. The American representative could not understand these ancient words, but the Chinese people who understood and the Japanese people who had similar cultures stayed farther away from the Americans. They were all gloating. The meaning of the sentence by Confucius was to use righteousness in return against evil deeds. But the Chinese man said that he believed more in returning evil deeds with evil deeds. It seemed that the old man was still holding a grudge against what the United States of America did before. Chapter 160 Appearance of the Torch Dragon Shanghai Special Office our people at the front lines have sent back information. That old man who is suspected to be from the Ming dynasty said that he has a way to solve this crisis. The Shinto priest also asked the Japanese government to provide the entire country's wasabi as payment. The people gathered in this room hadn't left ever since the beginning of the incident. This incident was simply too big, and they would only dare go to sleep once the incident is solved. They plan to stay here and conduct a discussion. The leader casually talked about the information gathered by the intelligence agents in the front line. Everyone in the room was either under the Ministry of State Security or an expert from various fields of studies regarding supernatural events. Wasabi? Guibin responded in a timely manner. That's right, Wasabi. After our government found out about this, it ordered the collection of a large amount of it. A special research team and laboratory have been prepared. Since these superhumans want wasabi, there is definitely some mysterious substance in the wasabi that we haven't found. Moreover, if we see the old man, we can also give him some wasabi to extend our friendship. The leader's words made everyone nod. 
using wasabi to create a friendly relationship with the superhumans was a bargain. Before the research institutes found out the secrets of wasabi, they were useless to the government. Moreover, most Chinese people looked into the world of human affairs. If you send them something, it would be easier to establish a friendship. Wasabi? Isn't there something recorded in the inner classic of the Yellow Emperor and listed as the King of Plants? Could there be any relationship between them? An expert in the field of Chinese medicine spoke at that time. The specifics will have to wait until we are able to obtain research results. The things written by the ancestors are quite questionable, but there is a possibility that it is hiding big secrets. Since wasabi is crowned by the inner classic of the Yellow Emperor, then it really might be hiding something profound. The leader also did not understand it and just casually said this. The people on the front lines also said that the old man claims to be an alchemist and is going to use the method of sacrificing to the spirits and gods to deal with the crisis. Sacrifice to the spirits and gods? Alchemist? Hearing these words, Gui Bin leaned forward and excitedly said, could he be starting a ritual to summon the three pure ones and the four heavenly ministers? That's Taoism's Taoists. The team leader rolled his eyes and said, Taoism arose at the end of the Han dynasty created by the philosopher Lao Tzu. The so-called three pure ones were created afterward. Those spirits and gods believed by the ancient people of the Qin and pre-Qin dynasties have nothing to do with the three pure ones. It is more appropriate to say it's a sacrifice to Tai, Gong Gong, Fuxi, Nua, Xian Wu, or Qi Yu. I suggest that you reread records of the Grand Historian, Li Sao, Nine Songs, Book of Rites, and other similar books to understand these spirits and gods. Don't mix them up with the recent flood of popular chaotic genre novels. Mentioning the mythology written in those will make people laugh at you. Hearing these words, Gui Bin's expression darkened. It couldn't be helped. The recent flood of chaotic genre novels was really too popular. Many young people thought that those were the real Chinese mythology, but they were closer to pure fiction. The chaotic genre novels were mostly recreations of Investiture of the Gods, Journey to the West, and the story of Swordsman from Shushan. The so-called Three Purities appeared only after the Han Dynasty. The real mythology of China consisted of those written during the Preaching period. At the same time, many histories and myths had already been mixed up. If that old man is really from the Ming Dynasty, he lived in the same era as Zhang Qinzhen, I mean Wu Qinzhen, so the investiture of the gods created by Su Zhonglin hadn't been made as he hadn't been born yet. Moreover, he calls himself an alchemist. In terms, people think that Taoists are fortune tellers, but what does an alchemist do you might wonder. In actuality, it is the title of an official during the Zhou Dynasty. Our culture could be said to be derived from those rites during the Zhou Dynasty. These alchemists were famous in modern times for fooling emperors into believing that they could refine the elixir of immortality. The most famous case was Su Fu who was said to have helped Qin Shi Huang refine the elixir of immortality. Saying so, the leader suddenly closed his mouth. Then the entire conference room became quiet. Everyone looked at each other with shocked faces. Someone could not help but mutter, we used to think that the elixir of immortality was a lie because ancient records stated that people were fed mercury or other toxic elixirs, but if those mysterious powers are real, maybe there is a real formula to the elixir of immortality. Be careful with your words. The head of the group interrupted. Immortality was simply too amazing. If the country's top brass or those bigwigs learned that it was possible, a big event might just occur. Since they stopped their line of questioning, the team leader decided to change the subject. Look, the mysterious old man who calls himself an alchemist is preparing the sacrifice to the spirits and gods. Everyone pay attention. China's satellite had been constantly monitoring the situation in Tokyo. Everyone watched as the ritual began. They stretched their necks and tried their hardest to not blink. Louis had changed into a rather preaching outfit. Before this, he had pretended to take a bath with the fishes in a river. There was a simple altar prepared. It was built with stone, branches, and so on. It was considered one of the simplest methods of sacrificing to the spirits and gods during the Preaching dynasty. As for the complex one, Louis did not understand it. He was just trying to fool people and not really trying to copy what the ancient emperors had been doing. This time Louis was using the ritual order, Yin, Jian, Guan, Xiang. In any case, his main focus was not even on the sacrifice ritual. It simply did not matter. The most important thing was the thing he set last, the legendary spell. First, he used tinder instead of matches to light branches on fire. He let it burn until the smoke reached the heavens. 
This was the ean of the process. Then he sacrificed the hunted wild animals and freshly sown crops. This was the gen of the process. He followed it by sprinkling rice wine made by hand. This was the guan process. Finally, he offered wine and food to the spirits and the gods, which was the siang process. After doing these, Louis carefully pulled out a section of bamboo and a square cloth from his sleeves. Golden words were written on the cloth which was the prayer of sacrifice. As for what those things written on it were, Louis wasn't too clear about it as he just copied things randomly from Google and Baidu. The governments around the world could clearly see what was written, but Louis made sure that they could never analyze what was written on it. If a linguist who was an expert in ancient text saw the original text written by Louis, he would probably vomit blood, because the words were a complete mismatch and did not have any pattern. After a pretentious prayer, Louis threw everything into the fire in front of him. Now that everything was burned, the government could not recover what he wrote. After checking that everything was burnt to ashes, Louis began to act and began using spells. Create Wind. Mist. This novel is available on Hosted Novel. Illusion. With these three spells, a dragon-like creature slowly appeared in the sky. It was just like the shadow of Cthulhu. With the, echo, spell, a strange sound unheard of by humans whistles throughout Tokyo. Anyone who was familiar with the classic of mountains and seas would definitely recognize the creature that gradually appeared over Tokyo, it was a torch dragon. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe.